Hey, welcome back everybody. Great to see you on this Saturday. Hope we're all having a wonderful start to our weekend so far. And we've had a very interesting past couple of days here in the weather department. The good news is uh, we're in a little bit of a lull here to ring in the new year before going later on into next week. Things once again get very active as we're watching multiple storms that have winter weather potential. And all of that I think could be followed up by a really big shot of cold air for someone in the country and a pretty major storm with that shot of cold air. And I'll tell you who that could be here later on in the video. Uh, now, if you haven't already subscribed, definitely consider doing so. We've had an incredible month uh, so far, and uh, we're looking to end out December just as strong as we started it and have continued it. And I also think uh, going into January, we will have a uh, very impressive month as well here in terms of channel growth. And all of that goes back to you folks uh, just returning to watch and hitting the like button and commenting and uh, really everything you've already done for me. So I really do appreciate that a lot. Uh, 2023 has been quite a special year for this channel. Uh, with all that said, though, let's go ahead and jump on into your forecast. Now, taking a look at our um, infrared satellite here, you'll notice again things are a bit quieter than maybe we've seen the past couple of days. We do have some leftover uh, snow showers here now working on through the northeast. We talked about that yesterday. Uh, we have also seen a couple snow showers into sections of the mid south over the past uh, 24 hours or so. In fact, we even saw. Uh, some snow showers make it as far south and east as the Atlanta metro yesterday. So uh, again, we did discuss that in the forecast, and sure enough, that did come true. And uh, also, like I talked about, not many folks got much accumulation out of it uh, outside of those higher elevations. I know some folks in western North Carolina have got an inch or two on the ground this morning. And that's kind of about what the forecast called for. Uh, so good to see that kind of verify as we thought it would. Uh, taking a look at our uh, current um, watches, warnings, and radar imagery here. Again, uh, starting in the East Coast, we do have some of those snow showers, especially kind of here into New York State, Vermont, New Hampshire, and into Maine, specifically the northern half of Maine, seeing some of that um, you know, snow falling this morning and afternoon. And this will slowly work offshore uh, as we begin to clear out going later on into our Saturday and into our Sunday before another storm system kind of dives down out of Canada, a clipper-like system. And again, we'll look at that here in just a moment. Now, outside of there, um, we do have some ongoing uh, you know, winter weather advisories and special weather statements for any slick roads that may be left over here. Uh, again, even as far south as uh, northeastern Alabama had enough snow accumulate uh, yesterday that there could be a couple slick spots there on some back roads. So definitely make sure you're watching out if you're driving in anywhere in this part of the country today, as it once again will be very cold uh, this afternoon as this cold air really settles in. And uh, just quickly noting on the West Coast, we do have another storm system working in off the Pacific. And uh, I know I don't talk about California and the West Coast all that much. Uh, I promise I will. Uh, just give me uh, till January. I'm still out of uh, Charlotte right now back home. So these videos have had to be a little bit shorter. And with active weather in the East, it's just been a little difficult to kind of cover West Coast as well. Uh, but what I was going to say is California has seen some crazy waves recently. So if you do happen to be watching from out there, uh, again, I haven't forgotten about you. You're just going to have to give me a couple days to get back to Charlotte and uh, we'll be back to kind of discussing more of the country as a whole. Alrighty, with that said though, let's go ahead and discuss um, kind of what we're expecting over the next couple of days here in the east. Again, this morning and afternoon, uh, we are expecting some snow to continue to fall here in sections of New England as this low pressure here uh, kind of begins to continue to pull away here. Uh, just enough cold air funneling in on the back side that that rain is changing over to snow. Uh, also, if you're watching in Maine, let me know how much snow and ice you saw yesterday. I was lucky enough to have somebody comment from Maine on yesterday's video and let me know they got a pretty good uh, dosing of ice there. And uh, again, hate to see that, but um, you know, uh, good to get those reports from you folks. So really do appreciate that. Now, also this afternoon, expect still some leftover flurries or even snow showers here into the Appalachia chain and even outside of there into sections of the Ohio River Valley. Could still see a couple flakes fly, I think, uh, really throughout the day today. Once again, though, no real impacts expected unless uh, you're on the highest peaks of some of those mountains there uh, throughout Appalachia. Now that kind of moves on through and uh, then the cold air really settles in for our New Year's Eve day and New Year's itself. And uh, also by the time we're waking up on New Year's Eve, look at this low pressure kind of uh, working its way out of Canada here, uh, very quickly diving off to the south and east. Uh, this isn't a very strong clipper system by any means, but it is going to bring some snow flurries and showers as well as a reinforcing shot of cold air. Um, so I think uh, starting off uh, January here is going to be quite chilly for a lot of folks, which is probably quite different than what we saw for December, which was pretty above normal for most people. 
Uh, now getting into New Year's Eve afternoon and evening by about the time the sun's going down here, about 5 o'clock Eastern time. Again, a pretty good area here of some scattered snow showers, maybe even some rain showers here if you're on the southern end of this, kind of into Kentucky. Uh, but again, not too many impacts with this thing. Just, um, you know, could definitely bring some festive flakes to bring in the new year. And a couple people could definitely see some accumulation out of it. Uh, just nothing too out of the normal for this part of the country. Now, this is bringing in uh, the kind of a new year here. This is midnight, January 1st, and uh, you'll notice, again, still some scattered snow showers here throughout the evening and overnight of Sunday. Uh, if you happen to be going to Times Square, uh, it looks pretty good. It'll be chilly for sure. Definitely bring a jacket, but uh, the weather overall looks uh, pretty nice for you folks there. And uh, then we kind of begin to clear out a little bit going into our New Year's Day itself as this big trough here, and you'll notice by all these blue lines, continues to settle in, and that cold air uh, kind of takes hold for much of the eastern half of the country. Uh, now, what I will also mention here at the end of this, we do have a bit of a weak uh, low pressure that may try to ride through the southeastern United States for New Year's Day and kind of the 2nd of January. Uh, right now, it looks like the cold air and the moisture aren't going to quite connect, and also the system looks relatively suppressed. Um, so I think, you know, a couple uh, cold rain showers are possible in the southeast for the first couple days of January. But again, overall, just not too many impacts. It's the two storms after that one uh, that we'll really have to watch, I think, for any winter weather potential. All right, quickly discussing snowfall totals here going into or going really into the next couple of days from this uh, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day system. Again, nothing really to write home about, but I think half an inch to an inch of snow, not out of the question for much of Wisconsin and Michigan here, and especially if you're kind of on the UP of Michigan and some of those favored like effect snow regions, a couple inches of snow could accumulate. And uh, same story here, I think on the western shores of Michigan, specifically the southwestern shores uh, could see a you know, couple or about an inch or so of snow. Outside of there though, again, more of a light snow shower. Uh, some places will get a little more snow than others, just kind of the nature with these types of systems. As for the Northeast, again, same story. Um, some folks will see a little more than others. I think those normal lake effect uh, areas kind of here uh, near Erie or just south of Erie could get an inch or two, but outside of there, really a dusting to an inch, uh, nothing to write home about. Now, if you're in the mountains of West Virginia, this is including what's going to fall today and tonight from our current uh, ongoing upper level low, and same story for up here into Maine. So if you're watching in Maine, maybe another inch or so of snow. If you're watching in the higher elevations of West Virginia, uh, could still see another couple inches of snow as we really crank up uh, kind of those northwest flow snow showers this afternoon and continuing into tonight. All right, let's discuss uh, these next two storm systems. And again, I've been preaching about this really since uh, about Christmas. We've had this uh, pattern I've been eyeing for some winter weather potential, and I still see it. Um, I don't think the chances have necessarily gotten any better or worse uh, since the pattern started. Um, so we'll go ahead and break that down for you and show you what I'm still seeing today. Uh, now to kind of just start off the map here, this kind of area of blue on your map, that's uh, what is currently uh, moving on through as well as uh, that next shot of cold air going into our New Year's Day. Uh, now that eventually moves out of the way and then this is when things get interesting. Going into this kind of Wednesday, Thursday time frame, we've got another storm system here uh, likely riding through the southeastern part of the country and it's got just enough maybe uh, cold air connection out of Canada uh, that we could have a marginal snow event for somebody. Uh, now this first storm system, overnight models have um, trended towards a weaker suppressed system, uh, but also they've trended to a little bit more cold air in the region. Uh, so yesterday we were looking at maybe a bit more of a rainy scenario in the southeast with temperatures in the low 40s. Uh, now it's looking like more of a suppressed storm system that maybe just brings rain down towards the Gulf Coast and temperatures might be more in the 30s for folks uh, that were originally going to see rain. So. Uh, it's going to do a couple things there with that trend. Uh, one, obviously less likely to see winter weather out of it, but it could establish more cold air than originally thought for our second storm system uh, that uh, we'll be working on in later next week going into next weekend. And here it is, uh, likely starting through the Southern Great Plains going through about next uh, Friday and into Saturday uh, before eventually working into the Southeastern United States going into uh, later next weekend. And this one, I think, is a much better shot at bringing some wintry weather. Uh, now, take a look at our latest GFS model from overnight with this storm system. Uh, again, this is, let me back this up, actually. This is New Year's Day. Uh, again, here's some of those scattered rain showers I talked about. Could bring some rain towards uh, kind of the Gulf Coast states. Uh, but that doesn't really bring many crazy impacts, but we do have cold air funneling in. Uh, now, here comes that first storm system, uh, again, going into about next Wednesday, Thursday. 
And again, if you watched yesterday's video, this was much more robust, a little bit stronger, a little further north, was even bringing some mountain snow. Uh, now it's, again, much more suppressed as I talked about, just meaning it's not quite as strong and that cold air is kind of pushing it further south. Um, so right now that first storm system looks to be, you know, not really much of a problem. Could bring some rain, of course, to the Gulf states, as I mentioned. And we could also get some uh, more snow showers through the Midwest here uh, as that cold air is continuing to funnel in going into the middle of next week. Now going into that second storm system though, and again, I'll start this off by saying uh, this isn't a forecast. This is just one model run that we got uh, this morning from the GFS. Uh, but here it is. Notice it's starting out here into the desert southwest through California, bringing snow showers to, again, those higher elevations of Arizona, New Mexico, and eventually going into uh, kind of overnight Friday and Saturday, moves through Texas, Oklahoma, bringing some rain and snow showers uh, before eventually going into our Saturday afternoon. Look at the latest GFS model a little more than a week away here. Um, we've got widespread snow breaking out into the Mid-South from northern Arkansas through the Ozarks through Tennessee, northern Mississippi, Alabama, uh, Georgia, and eventually even breaks out into some Carolina snow and ice. Uh, they're going right into the changing into the second week of January. Uh, so again, it's still about a week out. And as I said, this is not a forecast, just one model run. And I'll show you kind of the real probabilities of this happening here in just a moment. Uh, but, you know, that definitely brings... Um, a notable winter storm to areas of the southeast here with the latest GFS model um, going into, uh, again, the end of the first week of January, about that 7 to 10 day out time frame. Uh, our European model uh, shows kind of a same similar start here, that first storm system that we were talking about. Again, uh, just a very cold rain for sections of the southeast. Uh, that cold air, it's nearby. It's right here. They're just not quite hooking up uh, on the latest European model. Uh, that moves through. Not too many impacts with that. And then here comes the second storm system. Again, the European model agrees. Some mountain snow for Arizona, New Mexico. Uh, European model even shows some back-end snow into central Texas, maybe, as uh, some upper-level energy kind of drags down enough cold air. Now, where they disagree is going into the weekend. Uh, the GFS had a very heavy, wet snowstorm for much of Tennessee, Arkansas, and other parts of the southeast. The European model, just a lot of very cold rain, uh, even for the mountain regions here. So this is a very marginal event, okay? This is going to be likely either a 33, 32 degree, very heavy wet snow event, or this could be a 35 degree heavy rain event. Uh, and whenever we're more than a week away, just getting those couple degrees off are going to have, uh, you know, big impacts on the forecast as we often see this time of year before eventually that storm system kind of then moves out going uh, later on into, or really into the second week of January. All right, what are the probabilities of actually seeing some snow here? Um, again, kind of moving this map ahead, the first storm system into early next week, we could see some snow into the Midwest as we talked about. Nothing um, blockbuster here, but enough to definitely show some flakes flying. Uh, that first storm system going into about next uh, Thursday and uh, Friday, you'll notice chances not off the charts here by any means, but we do have a signal for some snow into the higher terrains of uh, Western North Carolina and up into kind of the interior northeast, even into, again, eastern Canada there, could see some snow out of that one. Uh, chances here, though, really just not very high. Again, the storm track is likely going to be quite suppressed uh, down to the south, but if we do get some uh, cold air running over the lakes, that's likely where we're going to get most of the snow from, uh, not really from a storm system itself. Now, that one moves on through, uh, and uh, then the next storm system comes through, and again, here we go. Uh, those snow chances increasing through Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and eventually working on into uh, sections of the Mid-South through North Carolina uh, and into the Tennessee and Ohio River Valley. You'll notice uh, going again about 10 days out, those snow chances increasing up the East Coast uh, as that storm signal is there. Uh, that was the European Ensemble members, GFS Ensemble members. I'm going to go ahead and just skip ahead here a little bit. Again, first storm system, about the same as the European. Where they differ is the second storm system. Uh, the GFS model has much more of a signal here into the southeast, uh, and obviously it and its ensemble members, ensemble members excuse me, think we'll have more cold air. Uh, and we're getting, uh, not notable, but you know, definitely noticeable <laughs> chances of some snow here through the southeast going into Again, that second storm system time frame about seven to 10 days from now. As I talked about yesterday, Climate Prediction Center here agrees they're outlining a couple places for the chance of some heavy snowfall, uh, particularly up the Appalachia chain from North Carolina all the way into the Northeast here for that snowstorm that again is about seven to 10 days out. 
Uh, so, uh, you know, the experts also agree this could turn into a big time snowstorm for somebody. Just really got to continue to outline those details. All right, quickly talking about the long range here. Again, uh, kind of where we left off. This is that first storm system. Here's the second one. Uh, and this is, after these two, this is when I think we could get a big shot of cold air for somebody. You'll notice those two move out and then look at what happens out west. We've got a big trough digging here. Uh, and this is going to bring very cold air inland uh, into sections of the western half of the country. And what it's also going to do is likely bring a storm track that kind of cuts through the country like this. Uh, as this happens, I think about 10 days from now, we're going to get a pretty whopper of a storm somewhere here in the central part of the country. Um, again, I've been talking about the first two weeks of January as a whole. I think the first week, the eastern half of the country has some snow chances, especially again about 7 to 10, uh, seven to ten days from now. Uh, and then after that, uh, those snow chances move back towards the plains before going back into the middle of January. We'll see if that cold air once again can slide eastbound, and if it does, uh, we could be dealing with a bit of a boundary here that leads to multiple snowstorms, kind of much like we saw, uh, I believe it was 2021 when Texas just got snowstorm after snowstorm after snowstorm. I'm not saying this will be to that extent by any means, and we'll obviously hope not. That was unfortunately a very dangerous time uh, for many folks, but uh, I think this could be a similar scenario where, again, just a boundary sets up. Uh, I think the middle to end of January could see some folks get multiple rounds of snow. Uh, but again, before we get that far, we've got two storm systems to watch now that both have winter potential, specifically that second one, again, about a week out from now. Uh, with all that said, though, I really do appreciate you guys watching and tuning in, and I'll see you all tomorrow.